Hi, and welcome to part one of my new video series, Organ Technology. In this series, we're going to be exploring electronic organ technology because pipe organ technology is a whole other thing. But we will talk about pipe organs a little bit, but mostly we're going to go through electronic organ technology, starting with the Hammond Tone Wheel organ, right through to today's digital organs. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure to like and comment on today's video. Each video in this series is going to begin with a question, and then we will explore the answers to that question over the next 15 to 20 minutes. To get going on this series, there's a couple of questions we have to start with. First, in this video, we're going to say, what is technology? In part two, we're going to deal with what is sound, and then we will get into the nitty gritty by exploring the Hammond Tone Wheel organ. So for part one, our introduction, what is technology? Back in the 1980s, I played in a number of rock bands, and in the 80s, keyboard players were highly sought after. If you were a decent player and could handle a synthesizer, you were in. I played in a number of bands, mostly cover bands, and a couple of original bands. I wrote some of my own music, and it was being a synthesizer player was a cool, cool thing. In the 90s, I started moving on to other things. I got married, I had a job as a church musician that was taking up most of my time, so I didn't really mess with the band thing very much. But I did notice that keyboard players were just not as present as they used to be in the 80s. And one day I was meeting with my nephew and he was showing me his new guitar rig. And he had a nice electric guitar, he had a full floor full of the various electronic effects pedals, reverb, echo, compressor, distortion, a looper, and the whole, whole works. Then he had a big fancy amplifier with, of course, lots of dials, switches, and knobs on it. And he was telling me a little bit about his band and uh, what kind of music they were interested in. And then for no particular reason, he bursts into this diatribe about how they were never going to have a keyboard player in their band because keyboards are not real instruments. I think he kind of forgot who he was talking to because he'd been to church and saw me play the organ. And so, you know, well, he's just a kid and kids make mistakes and say silly things. And I said, you know, next time you're at church, why don't you come on up and uh, why don't you show me all of the stuff about the organ I play that isn't real. Now this tension between real instruments and I guess fake instruments, all seems to center around what is the newer technology. And I think the first thing we've got to really wrap our brains around is that every musical instrument is a piece of technology. The pan flute required a certain level of woodworking skill and tools to be able to cut the tubes accurately, put them together and get them to hold together, a certain level of technology had to be arrived at before a pan flute could be made. A violin, that took a lot of technological advancement. You had to have really good chisels, really good metalworking was required to make those. Then you had to have a knowledge of various species of woods. You had to be able to carve all those pieces out, glue them together, and have this all come out with a high degree of accuracy. A certain level of technology was required to do that. And when you look at a piano, if you really look at a piano action and what really goes into building a top quality piano, there's a lot of technology there. We had to be able to cast and machine large pieces of steel accurately in order to make the plate that was gonna support the tension of all of those strings. Then take a look at the action. There's all kinds of parts. Every key has dozens of parts on it that all had to be made to a high degree of accuracy and assembled just so 
so that the thing would function. Every instrument is a piece of technology, but there seems to always be this tension because we kind of forget about that, right? We don't think of a violin or even a piano as a piece of technology. On the other hand, the computer simulations that imitate a piano or a violin, we definitely think of as technology. In the popular music scene today, there seems to be kind of two camps now, right? Uh, analog synthesizers are being kind of rediscovered. Uh, new machines are being built and are available, which is very exciting to me because I'm a bit of a synthesizer geek. But then there's music producers out there that are very adamant. I will never use a synthesizer in one of my songs. Why not? If we look at the evolution of synthesizers, we can kind of see why this might be. Uh, synthesizers started out as instruments that were creating entirely new sounds. If you listen to an album like uh, Wendy Carlos's Switched On Bach, those were entirely new sounds. Eventually, as synthesis got better and better and sampling came into play, it became easier and easier to directly imitate the sounds of other instruments. And a lot of people saw this as the displacement of other musicians. The fact is that the organ itself was seen as an instrument that would displace other instruments at various times in its history. So this kind of thinking is nothing new. If we go back to the earliest days of the organ, uh, over a thousand years ago, we would not recognize what they were calling a pipe organ as a pipe organ. It only had maybe one or two ranks of pipes. We got to get to the Baroque era before we see a pipe organ that we would really recognize as a pipe organ. And that didn't happen until wood and metalworking got to the point where you could build a complex mechanical mechanism that could connect the keys to the pipe valves until you could have multiple types of pipe species to produce a lot of different sounds that could be played in combination or individually. It's interesting to note that technology Leading edge technology was always a part of organ building, even back when pipe organs were the only thing possible. One of the very first uses of electricity was in pipe organ valves. So you had an electric keying and valve system to turn the pipes on and off, but you still had a kid back there pumping on the bellows. Electric motors for that came later. Some of those early experiments didn't work out too well, but then in the late, latter part of the 19th century, a guy named Robert Hope Jones came up with the first successful electric pipe organ valve system. And this led to an explosion of new types of organs because now new things were possible. Hope Jones, together with the Wurlitzer Company, would end up inventing an entirely new type of organ called the Hope Jones Unit Orchestra. You maybe know of it as a theater organ. Completely new idea in pipe organ building. Hope Jones also is credited with having predicted an all-electronic organ. He imagined a time when somehow by only electrical means you would be able to generate any kind of sound that you wanted. And this first started with the tone wheel organ first built by the Hammond Company. In episode three we're going to do a lot about the Hammond tone wheel organ. We're going to take a really in-depth look at that. So as we explore the electronic organ and its various iterations and evolution, my first concept that I'm going to be operating from is that all musical instruments are pieces of technology. And it doesn't matter whether it's an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar, they are both musical instruments 
created through technology. One isn't real and one fake. They are both real musical instruments that require human intervention to actually make any music. Same thing is true if we look at the pipe organ and the electronic organ. We can't really say that the pipe organ is a real instrument and the electronic organ is a fake instrument, although that's very popular among certain organists. They are both real musical instruments made possible through advances in technology. These days, both the pipe organ and the electronic organ, mostly using digital technology, continue to evolve side by side and there's a growing number of organs that actually utilize both technologies in order to take advantage of both worlds in the most efficient way possible. When we get deep into our exploration of the electronic organ we are of course going to start with the Hammond tone wheel organ, the very first commercially successful electric organ that allowed somebody for the first time to have a multi keyboard and pedal organ in their living room that they could practice on and not have to walk down to the church every time they needed to practice some music opened up tremendous doors. This was soon followed by the use of oscillator technology. Up until that point oscillators of course existed to produce radio waves but it was believed that they could produce tones if you could slow them down enough. Oscillators for radio waves, of course, operate in megahertz and kilohertz and so forth, whereas we need sounds that we listen to down in hertz, <laughs> 20 to 20,000 hertz. Building small oscillators that could generate tone was a big advancement. There was a whole host of ways that oscillators were used in building electronic organs. And electronic organs weren't necessarily built with the idea of directly imitating their pipe organ counterparts. That has become a highly prized aspect of electronic organ building these days, but it wasn't always the case. In the early days, electronic organs were seen as separate and unique instruments and some even today see them as separate and unique instruments. Oscillator technology lasted clear through the 1980s, long past when digital innovations were first being made. Oscillator technology's full potential may or may not have been fully realized. Oscillator technology also led to the analog synthesizer, and those types of synthesizers are enjoying kind of a renaissance these days because there's just something about that oscillator sound. When we pass by oscillator technology, we go to digital technology. In digital technology, there are three major ways in which organ tones are generated. And these can be tones that directly imitate pipe tones or they can be tones that are completely unique if you want to do, do it that way. There is digital sample playback, and this is the process of making a recording of the pipes of a pipe organ, and then having those recordings play back when the organist plays the keys. There's also additive synthesis, and this is the process where you take a sample or you listen to an organ pipe and you put it out on a spectrum analyzer and you see what harmonics are involved. And in part two, where we talk about what is sound, we'll get into exactly what that means. Digital synthesis is also, there's a more advanced version of it called physical modeling. So instead of telling the computer to run a sequence of harmonics, now we have an algorithm, a complex set of instructions that are telling the computer to generate a tone that is forever varying and this produces some pretty realistic results. Again, we can use all of these technologies to directly imitate the pipe organ 
or we can use it to generate new and sounds that haven't ever been around before. So we've got a lot to cover and I plan on creating a new one of these videos about every two weeks. So you'll want to keep up with this series. Today's video we've just had a brief introduction and an overview of what's going to happen. We've talked about what is technology. Well, technology is the process of making just about anything. Next time we're going to talk about what is sound. And there's a lot of misconceptions about sound. For example, I've got a microphone here and we like to say that it is capturing my voice. Well, I'm going to explain how that's not quite true. That's fine as a generic term, but that's not exactly what's happening to uh, take my voice, make some type of recording of it, and then reproduce it on the other end, and the reproduction is what you are hearing. So, until next time, thank you for joining me today. I'm excited about this new series. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of great information. So, until next time, be sure to subscribe to my channel. You can also support my work on Venmo or PayPal. You can become a regular supporter at Patreon. All of those links are in the video description, and we'll see you next time.